at the fifth round of the championship in Portimao, Marc Basseng led the field into Turn 1. Frank Stippler and Tony Volander got together in their Audi and Ferrari respectively, sending both of them out of the race, Stippler with rear right suspension damage. It was at the pit stop window though where the race really came to life. Marc Bassin coming in to hand over to his teammate Marcus Mingelhock and they came out just in front of the sister Mercedes. That car, driven by Thomas Jaeger, really put the challenge on for the race lead, but them going side by side through the final sequence of corners ultimately cost them. The Hexis Racing McLaren of Steph Dusseldorp was able to emerge in the race lead just ahead of the two Mercedes. A fantastic three-way battle for the lead then ensued. Going down into the hairpin at turn six, the cars were three abreast, with Dusseldorp just holding on to the inside line. But once again, the Mercedes started to battle amongst themselves. Thomas Jaeger in the number 37 car feeling he was quicker than Marcus Finkelhock. And indeed, coming into the final sequence of corners, he managed to get up alongside and make the move stick around the outside at turn 15 to get past his teammate and move up into second position. He would then start to close down on Steph Dusseldorp from McLaren and at the same spot where they went three abreast one lap previously, he managed to move to the outside line and then get the cutback out of the hairpin to take the lead of the race. Much to the Hexis Racing Team's disappointment as they saw the lead slip through their fingers. One lap later and an almost carbon copy manoeuvre from Marcus Winkelhock saw him moved up into second place. He just about managed to get the overlap going into turn seven to make it an Al Inkle Mercedes 1-2. There was a little bit of contact further back in the field as Nicky Mayer Mernhoff sent Laurence Van Thor into a spin, but it was a 1-2 for the Al Inkle.com Munich Motorsports pair, keeping them at the top of the team's championship. Jaeger and Pastorelli taking the victory ahead of their teammates Mark Basseng and Marcus Winkelhock as the season moved into a six-week break. For the second time this season, GT1 heads to just outside of Bratislava and the Slovakia ring. Let's have a look at the entry list. Audi managed to refine some of their pace from earlier in the season last time out at Portimao, and fresh from winning the Spa 24 hours, Frank Stippler is confident they can continue the turnaround. Uh, some bad luck during the season already, uh, several times. Um, I think three of uh, five uh, championship races, uh, we had some retirements, uh, partly in the first corner. And this was the case in Portimao as well. I mean, uh, we were, uh, I think we finished third and um, with this kind of BOP we had uh, until Portimao and uh, since the last uh, three races um, it was always uh, difficult uh, to get a good start and um, this results uh, always in some trouble in the first corner and um, yeah, if we start uh, second row you can be sure that the third and fourth row roll will be side by side um, in the fourth corner um, against the Audi and um, this causes some trouble in the past. Michael Bartels and Jelma Berman won the championship race last time we were here at the Slovakia ring and a strong performance in Portimao, if unspectacular, means that driver pairing are still leading the championship coming into this weekend. Jelma Berman's confident they can hold on to that position. I mean, it was the best weekend we've had the whole season here, so um, I was happy to come back here. And it's also a nice track, you know, it's fun, it's quite tight, but uh, fun to race. And uh, I mean, we're in quite good shape, so hopefully we can, uh, you know, stay at least in the lead of the championship and uh, get a good result. Ferrari had strong pace in Portimao, locking out the front row in qualifying, but a season's best finish of fifth place for Francesco Castellacci and Enzo E hasn't been the way that they would have wanted their season to go. Castellacci feels, though, that the Ferrari car is suited to this Slovakian circuit. Yeah, it gave uh, me and Enzo a lot of confidence. We did a really good job, both of us, in uh, Portimao, where we did both uh, me in uh, Q2, I did uh, P2, and uh, Enzo P2 also in uh, Q3. And uh, we had a, a good start of the race, and uh, we, uh, okay, then we had some problem at the pits, but we, we hope to, to keep the, the same uh, level of uh, competition here. And, uh, I think the, the car is really good, it adapts quite well to the circuit since it's full of a uh, mix of uh, fast and uh, medium corners which adapts really good to the 458 and I think we will do a good job. The Sunred Ford GT team have still struggled to turn their outright pace into points. This weekend in Slovakia ring, Milos Pavlovic will be joined in the Ford GT by Andreas Zuba who is now racing in his third team of the 2012 season. Feels very good. First practice is now over. Uh, it's 
it's the stiffest GT car ever have been driven. So it's, it's good because I come out of the Formula Sport. I like it a lot. Uh, now I need to do more laps in the free practice uh, too. Get more used to the car, but I think we will be fine. Stefan Rossino will once again be at Lamborghini, hoping his home knowledge can pay off. But Peter Cox didn't race the last time GT1 were here, but with the Dutchman's wealth of experience, he should still be a front runner this weekend. You don't have a lot of running time, obviously, with the two free practice sessions, and it's immediately straight into qualifying, and you have all uh, top level drivers, so you know, I have to still get get to that limit, but I hope now the second session uh, will get me there. There should not be a reason why we should not be fast, but uh, you never know, you know, as I said, it's so competitive and obviously the, the, the situation regarding weather and temperatures are completely different, so we have to see how the tyres and the car react to that, but in, in the basis I think we should have a competitive car here. Yes. The Hexis McLaren team are still looking strong in the team's championship, running in second place. And Steph Dusseldorp and Fred Makovicki are still in strong contention for the Drivers' Championship. It shows that two months ago uh, it was a really good race for us and uh, we hope so to do the same uh, this weekend. It's really important uh, if we want to keep uh, the... Uh, to, to stay on the front of the championship and uh, to try to fight against uh, uh, Vitafon or uh, Olinkel until the end of the championship. The Alinkle.com Munich Motorsports Mercedes had a fantastic weekend last time out in Portimao, winning both the qualifying race and the championship race. But the Slovakia ring doesn't necessarily suit the car. I think that from all the remaining races, this will be the most difficult one for us. We struggle always a little bit with the top speed and you know there's a really long straight here, so that's a bit of a problem for us. Uh, so we will see where we end up end of the weekend. Um, we just have to try to make no mistakes and, uh, and minimize the damage here. Good evening everybody and welcome to the Slovakia ring for the qualifying race ahead of this next round of the FIA GT1 World Championship. My name is Jack Nichols, I'm here and I will be guiding you through the action along with Jenny Gao down in the pit lane and it's GT1's second visit to the Slovakia ring and it's very very sunny as you can see and there you can see the grid getting ready on pole position it is the Vita 41 racing team BMW it'll be started by Michael Bartels they are currently leading the championship he and his teammate Yama Berman but alongside them are the second place car in the championship Marcus Winkelhock it's been a very busy afternoon for the writer engineering Lamborghini crew it's a miracle that Albert von Tenen Taxis and Stefan Rossina are out there because they had a big incident earlier on today in qualifying I yeah, was understeering a little bit, was not making the tra trajectory as it was supposed to. So I went a little bit wide on the exit and I went a little bit off the line. Therefore got a little bit of oversteer, had to open, uh, use the track until the, um, to go outside of the curbs on the green bits. And which was okay as well, but unfortunately the car got a little bit of a, got a little bit of a hit on the curbs because it's quite low and that that disturbed the rear of the car another bit so I had to open up and I couldn't come out and, and needed to take a bit of the grass and on the grass it was just uh, I was just a passenger from then on got a pretty good guardian angel I'm grateful he's still still up at this game well uh, when I saw the video of the crash it was clear that the car is a total write-off and we quickly took the decision to bring a car here so was it was quite a thing to do we are like 500 kilometers from here and when Albert was still in medical center the car was in his way already congratulations to my uh, to my driver he made 500 kilometers with a trailer in four hours something so it's definitely a new record i guess we have to pay all the fines on the way here but was yeah i'm really impressed about my people let's have a look at the grid then ahead of this qualifying race top two in the championship on the front two places on the grid berman uh, Bartels and Winkelhock, sorry, will be starting those cars. It's the second driver of all these cars that will be starting. Good lap for Stefan Otelli, putting him in fourth place. The Audi's a little bit of a resurgence. Unfortunately, the Ford GT won't be starting. Milos Pavlovich, the driver, was meant to be starting that car, but he's been taken ill, unfortunately. Hopefully, there he will be recovered by tomorrow, but we wait and see exactly what happens there. McLarens and Ferraris at the back of the grid, they really struggled in qualifying. Steph Dusseldorp will be starting the number one Hexis McLaren and then at the back of the grid Stefan Rossina yet to drive the car so far this weekend. 
The sixth round of the FIA GT1 World Championship of 2012 gets underway when the lights go out here at the Slovakia ring. Michael Bartels on pole position in that black and blue BMW on the outside, the Mercedes of Marcus Vingelhock. As the lights go green and away we go, down towards the first corner, it's a poor start, I think, from Laurence Vanthor. He's dropped a number of positions already, but it's absolutely side by side for the lead into turn one. Bartels will have the inside line and should be able to hold on to that lead position. A storming start from one of the Lamborghinis making his way up there. I think that's Darrell O'Young has got a good start. Almost contact between him and one of the Mercedes, but away they go. Up towards turn two where the yellow flags will be out, so they will all have to get into single file through the second corner. That's going to be easier said than done. They all behave quite nicely and slot into single file as they come through this tyre chicane for the first time. Very quick chicane. Watching the GT1 cars down here is absolutely phenomenal. They now crest the hill and drop down into turn three where racing is once again allowed. So up at the front, Michael Bartels does exactly what he needed to do and holds the gap over Marcus Vingelhock. It's still Matthias Lauder in third place, but there's been a change between the Audis. Oliver Jarvis is now in fourth. Lawrence Vanthor has dropped all the way down to seventh or eighth position. Decent start from Alvaro Perent as well. Here's a look at the start then. The lights went green pretty quickly, actually. There you can see Racina darting out. Watch out for Darrell O'Young in the first of the white Lamborghinis. Lawrence Vanthor in the Audi on the far right of your picture with the white wing. He started in fourth position, and you can see by the time they reach the first corner, he's already down in seventh, eighth place, really. And it was eighth place that he ended up in, so really not good from Lawrence Vanthor at the start there. Pit stop window will open in 12 minutes' time, so that's when it'll all kick off again, but at the moment, it's a very even battle up at the front. gap at the front has gone out at eight tenths of a second. In fact, Bartels found four tenths of a second over the second place man, Marcus Vingelock. Now, where's Oliver Jarvis? And uh, he's on track with a puncture to race. We haven't picked it up, but number 33, Audi, there he is. Oliver Jarvis has got a left rear puncture. What a disappointment for them. After the disappointment of Portimao, where they finished the qualifying race in third place and then ended up with a puncture and rear right suspension damage after the first corner. This race has just gone from bad to, well, from decent to bad for them now because they are not in contention for the win anymore. What a real shame that is for Oliver Jarvis as Stefan Rosina comes in to serve the stop and go penalty. That car out on the grid after the travails it has had today and, well, real, real frustration for Oliver Jarvis as he crawls down the back straight. And uh, Racina exits the pit lane. The local man unable to use his local knowledge really today. Back to the battle for second. Finkelhock's pace appears to have catastrophically dropped off really in these last few laps. Whether it's the tyres or the setup or exactly what. But ever since that mistake from Bartels, he, uh, he hasn't really been able to capitalise. It's Worth keeping an eye out for car number 32. Oh, there is Oliver Jarvis. He's, he wasn't even at turn 10 when I thought he was. He's only at turn 9. He is, well, he's going to get back to the pit about three laps down. Really? He should have that. I would say very, very slow move. He's got a long, long way to go. He's literally at the halfway point of the circuit. mistake from Lauda. Lauda's run very wide and as a result this is going to be a challenge perhaps for Thomas Jaeger. Down they come past the slowing car of Oliver Jarvis but Thomas Jaeger has taken advantage of that slight mistake from Matthias Lauda to really now be behind the BMW. Two very disappointed drivers and they're saying wait because they might send Oliver Jarvis back out but he doesn't look particularly fussed about going back out does he? And really, the luck hasn't been with them at all so far this season. Let's look at this, it's still all tight between second, third and fourth. I'm not quite sure what that incident is between Darrell O'Young and... Uh, oh, there's an opportunity. Matthias Lauder's gone very slow out of eight. He has to cover the inside line because Jaeger was right with him into nine. 
but there's not really going to be enough room for an overtake into nine. That's given Marcus Winkel a breathing space. Into the hairpin of ten. The pit stop window is now open, so which of these five cars is going to blink first? Because look, there's Van Thor. He's absolutely on it today. Very impressive drive so far from Lawrence Van Thor. And when he hands over to Stefan Otelli, don't be too surprised if we could see a WRT Audi in the hunt for the win for the first time since Zolder all the way back in April. Let's keep an eye then on the pit lane entry. Any of these guys coming in? Yes, race leader in, Michael Bartels, second place in, Vingelhock. Jaeger runs a little bit wide, kicking up some dust, but once again, as we had last time out in Portimao, Darryl Young coming in as well, we've got a straight pit lane duel between the two big German teams, Vita for one Racing, putting Yama Berman in the car, and alinkle.com Munich Motorsports putting Mark Basseng in the car. Tires change. This is going to be a decent stop for BMW. Don't forget the BMW came in ahead of the Mercedes. Car on the jacks. Away it goes. Where is the Mercedes? Oh, the fire marshal there needs to take a little bit more care about where he's looking. Out of the pits we come. The BMW was in front and it remains in front. So that was uh, very close between the pair of them, but ultimately, I think Mercedes have gained a little bit there, I would say. Alain Cole have closed the gap just a little bit, but not enough. It's still the net lead at the moment. Laurence Van Thor pits to hand over to Stefan Ortelli. Now, how quick can the Belgian Audi Club Team WRT squad change the tyres and get their driver changed? Will Stefan Ortelli come out in a battle for the lead of this race? Ortelli gets in. Van Thor helps him strap in. WRT down in fourth place in the team standings despite having a 1-2 in the opening round in Nagaru in both the qualifying and the championship race. Algarve was their first podium since then. And I think this isn't going to be good enough for WRT. It looks like a pretty slow pit stop. Away he goes now, but the race leaders have already gone well past. Down the straight, perhaps there may have been a problem with one of the tyres, but that has not worked out well for WRT. Stefano Telly comes out. Is that... Uh, no, that's Stefan Rossina. He's only going to come out just in front of Peter Cox in the... Lamborghini, in fact, Cox might, with his tyres up to temperature, fancy a look at Stefano Telly here. So that has not worked out at all well for WRT. Where's the BMW in the pits? Nicky Mayer Mounov taking over. They have a real chance, if this is a slick pit stop, of taking the lead away from their teammates. You can see in behind Avara Parent coming in to hand over to Gregoire de Moustier. Here are our net race leaders at the moment, though. The BMW coming into the final corner. Away goes Nicky Mayer Mounov. Eventually, that was a bit of a slow getaway. And Bartels is coming out of the final corner now. This is going to be pretty close between Bartels and Mayer Mounov. And the Mercedes has jumped them both. The Mercedes might be about to take the lead of this race. No, Bartels has just got enough speed. But that is going to be the battle for second place now. And it's just going to be held by the Mercedes. Brilliant pit work again from Al Inkel. And all that fantastic work from Matthias Lauda comes to Nout because Nicky Mayer Mounhoff, for whatever reason, had a bit of a slow getaway from the pit lane. Hopefully, we, we may even find out if there was a problem. Yelma Berman is absolutely flying. He's done his personal best in sector one on that last lap and the best of anyone in sectors two and three. That's how he's managed to come back out in such a comfortable lead of this race. A little look up the inside from Mayer Melnoff because Pastorelli's gone wide, has to back out of it. That was an ambitious move from Mayer Melnoff. The gap was there, but it was always going to close because even though Pastorelli had gone wide, that always meant he was going to apex late instead. Yama Berman comfortably leads here at the Slovakia ring. Let's hear from his teammate, Michael Bartels. 
Yes, Michael Bartel, that was an incredible stint for you and looking at um, Mateus as well, very good, but he just got pipped, didn't he, in the, um, in the pit stops? Yes, there was a small tro problem here in go away. I think um, the ignition was not on. So uh, when Nicky realized this, um, of course, it's, you lose tens by tens or even a second. But they are in a close fight, so um, it's still half an hour to go. And, uh, but it's very close racing, as we expected yesterday after the qualifying, or this morning. And um, yeah, I think we are performing well. Yelma is doing a good job, very quick lip times, and hopefully we can bring it home. All right, good luck. Thank you. Man, Melnoff is really pushing Nicky Pastorelli hard, despite that mistake or that's a half-hearted attempt on that last lap. He dropped back a couple of car lengths, but he's immediately reeled it back in. So it's impressive stuff from Mayor Melnhoff. Battle of the Nickies into the right-hander. Pastorelli really struggling to get the apexes, and easily Nicky Mayor Melnhoff gets up the inside contact between the pair of them as Mayor Melnhoff chops the door closed, but he moves up into third place. Nicky Pastorelli really struggling to get the car stopped and turned in in time. And Mayor Melnoff saw the gap. He's pretty ruthless when he's behind the wheel. Very happy chappy outside of the cockpit. But as soon as that visor comes down, like most of these guys, he becomes ruthless. Into turn six. Look at this, Pastorelli goes wide. Mayor Melnoff says, oh, hello. That looks like a tasty BMW size gap. Through he goes. Pastorelli might be a little knocked that there wasn't enough room left for him at the left-hand kink. But ultimately, I think Mayor Melnoff had enough so, impressive drive so far from Nicholas Mayer Mounoff. The battle has closed in for second place. So, not only has Nicky Mayer Mounoff impressively got past Nicky Pastorelli, he's now got his sights set on Mark Basseng. That last lap, that last lap, Mayer Mounoff did a 2 minute 1.956. Phenomenal pace from Mayer Mounoff in this BMW. And he's now right in the slipstream of the Mercedes as they come across the line. 5.5 seconds the gap at the front, but only 0.1 seconds between second and third places. Into turn one. 17 minutes to go. It's going to take a sterling effort from Mark Basseng to hold this second place. But he's, he's kind of got nothing to lose, really, because a lot of the times you may think, well, if I end up defending too hard, I'll just get swamped by the pack. But he's got enough of a cushion over... Firstly, it's his teammate in fourth place, and then it's another six seconds back down the road to Stefano Telly. So Mark Basseng really can defend for all his life is worth and not really lose out. Unless he and Mayor Mount have come together, of course, but driving standards so far this year in GT1 have been absolutely fantastic. Mayor Murnoff did give a friendly tap to one of the Audis. Is that the move into turn eight? A bit half-hearted. I think that's that's the kind of place where you see Mayor Murnoff's not inexperienced, but perhaps uh, compared to Mark Basseng. We've already seen him go for a couple of half-hearted maneuvers there. Nicky Pastorelli sets his personal best lap of the race and takes half a second out of everyone in front of him. But here's the look up the inside from Volanda. Nowhere near close enough, really, to get past Makovicki. Gets a good drive out of one, though. Might be able to uh, sneak up the inside into two. He's got an excellent drive out of one. And Tony Volanda is about to move up into eighth position. Job done up the inside into turn two. Ferrari very strong on traction. Perhaps that little shimmy towards the inside was enough to force Makovicki out wide. And the change has happened. Mark Basseng is now behind Nicky Mayer Melnoff. You can see Mayer Melnoff up in front. So the change has happened. So we'll wait to see exactly where that, uh, where that occurred. Here's a look. Into turn one we come. And uh, Basseng runs wide. And yep, there, Mayer Melnoff just gets a better run out of the corner and is side by side down into two and makes the move stick into two. Great stuff from Mayor Mounov. And he's up into second place. Matthias Lauda looking pretty satisfied with that. 
And this could well be the first one-two of the season for the Vita for One racing team. Ten minutes to go here at the Slovakia ring. And there is Nicky Mermounov. Him and Matthias Lauda have been absolutely on it today. Great pace from both of them and great racecraft as well. For Berman and Bartels up the front, it's been fairly straightforward. It's always a difficult race up at the front, of course, but they've had no one really to battle with. But Mayor Melnov and Lauda have had to work hard for this second place. And if they can keep it for the remaining 10 minutes or so of this race, they're going to be a very satisfied pair. But let us not forget, it's Yama Berman that leads in the number 18 Peter Vaughan Racing Team BMW. Championship-wise, this is going to extend their points advantage to six, I believe, if my mental math is correct. So still not a huge gap between first and second in the championship. And even though Dusseldorp and Makovicki are only going to end in the lower reaches of the top ten, it's still not a catastrophe for them. The battle between the McLaren and the Ferraris is still going on. Well, it was on that last lap, but it has now been resolved. You can see that there are two McLarens running line of stern, which means that that number three, AF Corsa Ferrari of Tony Volander, is now up into seventh place. Yama Berman leads three and a half seconds clear now of Nicky Mermanov. Mermanov's pace has dropped off a little bit. So there was some concern there. It looks as though it may just have been eased. Look at that. If WRT hadn't had that poor pit stop, you know, they would be well in the running for this race win. Because Stefano Telli in the number 32 Audi is the quickest man on the circuit so far, or at the moment, I should say. There is Berman, weaving his way through 10, 11 and 12, down towards turn 13 for the final time. Michael Bartels held onto the lead. A little bit of a wobbly moment at turn 10 when he outbroke himself. But he managed to pull it all together, pull out an advantage, and Yelma Berman now has taken over. Romped clear, setting the fastest lap of the race on the way, and he is going to win the qualifying race here at the Slovakia ring and give himself pole position for tomorrow. It's going to be a BMW lockout on the front row. It's very, very close for fourth place, but it's just going to be Nicky Pastorelli with Mark Bassain finishing ahead of him in third. Fifth place for Stefano Telli. Sixth place across the line will be Peter Cox but there's the celebrations on the BMW pit wall Diama Berman solid drive from him he's happy with that he secures the whole position for tomorrow's championship race and he goes to congratulate his team it's going to be a very Vita for One racing team heavy press conference in a few minutes time Diama Berman winning this race for the Vita for One racing team Yama Berman and Michael Bartels. They are down there in the paddock with Jenny Gao. That was a fantastic battle, so exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, it was a great race, great qualifying. You know, we started the weekend in a good way. So uh, Michael did a good job getting a really good start. And uh, normally, you know, we're about the least powerful car on the straight. So the starts with long straights are always very difficult. But he did an excellent job. And um, then I could, you know, take the car over in the leading position. And uh, only on the, the outlap, it was a bit close. And um, then I managed to, you know, open the gap again. And then my teammate closed the gap, you know, when he overtook, uh, uh, I think Mark was in the car. And uh, it was quite tight again in the end, but uh, great job to the team and great job to uh, my teammates. Let's have a look at the results. BMW 1-2, Mercedes-Benz 3-4 here at the Slovakia ring and this is how also how the grid will line up for tomorrow dark horse for tomorrow has to be the driver starting in fifth place Stefano Telli and Laurence Van Thorp absolutely undeserved fifth position it was just that slow pit stop work that cost them they are very much going to be in a battle for the race win tomorrow mark my words Peter Cox and Darryl o Young finishing in sixth place Ferraris of Verlanda and Ede in seventh and tenth the two McLarens in eighth and ninth Fontana Taxis and Stefan Rossina in uh, 11th place. And unfortunately, the retirement of Oliver Jarvis.
Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Slovakia Ring for the sixth championship race of this 2012 FIA GC1 World Championship season. It's the second championship race at the Slovakia Ring as well, because you may remember we were here two months ago in June, and all these fans were there then, and they've come back out again now. They're impressed they were with the entertainment we provided back then. It's a little hotter this time around. It was raining in June. It's 32.5 degrees centigrade on the circuit, 31.7 degrees air temperature here today and you couldn't be in a better place than on a nice sunny hill watching some GT1 action which is exactly what we've got coming up for you today and it's going to be a very tight race as well if yesterday's qualifying race is anything to go by we'll go through the grid in more detail in a few moments second place on the grid is going to be the Vita for One racing team that'll be started by Nicky Mayer Mounhoff and let's hear from him with Jenny Nicky, adrenaline high but after a great result yesterday you've got to be hoping for the same again today yeah, we hope so. Um, it's really tough, it's really hot. Um, but um, we went from free practice three to qualifying race two, so we hope that we go championship one today and yeah, give it all I have, maximum attack, and um, hope we see you on the podium. Good luck, hopefully see you there as well. Thank you. Mayor Melnoff hoping for the race win. That would be a magic drive if he could managed to get past his teammate and win this race but they had such pace yesterday Mayor Melnoff and Lauda that anything is possible really well let's have a look at the grid first of all shall we it's two BMWs on the front row Berman and Mayor Melnoff starting championship leaders on pole position then it's the two Mercedes who feel this is their weakest track of the four we have to go to this season in GT1 Ortelli and Peter Cox on row three I haven't said much about Peter Cox. I think he might be one to watch out for. Might just have the pace to keep with the lead pack. Volander and Makovicki in the Ferrari and McLaren. Then it's the same but reversed. In ninth and 10th place, the McLaren ahead of the Ferrari. De Moustier starting ahead of Enzo Eid. Alba Von Turn and Taxis will be hoping to find a little more pace today. Frank Stippler is going to be one to watch as well. He's going to try and carve through the field with Andy Zuba in that very fast starting for GT. Rolling start, when the lights go green, the sixth round of the championship will be underway. BMW front row, Mercedes second row, with a very fast Audi on the third row. Sixth championship race of the season here at the Slovakia ring gets underway when the lights go green and it's a very poor start from the number 37 Mercedes. Peter Cox has got a mega start. He's already on the outside as we head down into the first corner. You can see almost four abreast as they fan out along this very wide start finish straight. But it's Yama Berman who holds the lead into turn one. Peter Cox is trying to stick it around the outside and there's a spin for one of the McLarens. That's upset. Frank Stippler towards the back didn't catch which McLaren it was. It's the number one car. It's the third place men in the championship, Steph Dusseldorp and Fred Makovicki. Makovicki at the wheel has rotated, or half rotated anyway, down at the first corner. Down into the tyre she came for the first time then. And the big loser in all that was Nicky Mayer Melnoff. He's now dropped down into fourth position behind the very fast starting Peter Cox. So Berman leads. Basang second, and that's a spin for Makovicki. That's going to be Fred Makovicki, presumably with some kind of suspension damage that has uh, maybe caused that spin. We'll try and see exactly how that spin ended up. And, uh, well, I can just see out the commentary box window, actually, Makovicki has recovered. It was coming over the crest of the hill after the chicane. There's the dust it's caused because this circuit, a bit like a cart track, winds in and around itself. But Berman has made a break now. Here comes Andy Zuba attacking Gregoire de Moustier. He's been pushed onto the grass down there at the back on the uh, main start finish straight, but he has managed to find the inside line and move up into eighth position now. Getting past Gregoire de Moustier. Now, what's going on here at McLaren? Makovic has got out of the car, talking to Philippe Dumas. He's taking off his gloves. And I fear that might be the end of the race for the McLaren. Here's a replay of the start. Watch the Lamborghini, third car along. There he goes, the white Gallardo darting to the outside. Great start from him. As they all spread out. Going down to the first corner. Fred Makovicki then, far right-hand side. Let's see what happens to him. Is he going to get a tap from a Ferrari? Yes. So what happened was Enzo Ede was... was... Uh, was got closed in I think you might just see it at the back here no not quite but I think Enzo Eid got trapped between the McLaren and the Mercedes and that 
pincered the two into one another. Here's Makovicki. Whoa, big moment. Huge moment for Fred Makovicki. Peter Cox has now been passed by both Stefano Telli and now Tony Volando. We just saw that move going on into the final corner. And that's Albert von Ternen Taxis. Where is he there? Pulling behind some Armco. I'm not sure if he's pulling off or if he's rejoining the circuit there. Andy Zuba has the fastest first sector split of anyone and the fastest third sector split of anyone so far in this race. Yama Berman quickest in the middle sector, but Andy Zuba's on it, and there Melnoff's trying to get up the inside, almost contact between him and Mark Basseng, but he makes it through in an almost identical move to the one yesterday, almost contact between Otelli and Basseng as they come down into turn eight. But Nicky Mermanoff has moved up into second place. Otelli has the inside into nine, and he's going to make it through, surely. Yes. Basseng will get more speed, and he'll try and get back into turn 10 if he can. This is the battle over eighth place we're watching. Which will give the drivers four world championship points. There's the overlap out of turn one. And Frank Stippler gets the job done. Such a, a common oh, contact between the pair of them as they crest the hill. You saw some sparks fly off from Nicky Pastorelli's car. And there's a puncture for Enzo Eid, I think. Front right. And that's quite a way he's got to go back to the pit lane. The Ferrari team get to work on changing that front right. They'll check to see if it's done any damage. <laughs> no, they won't. They'll stick it on. I'm sure it's fine. And they'll, uh, and they'll send him back out. Volando feeling the need to go defensive down into turn 10. He's got a very racy Peter Cox behind him. The pit stop window, as I say, is open now. And we do see second place pitting then. Nicky Mermanoff coming in to hand over to Matthias Lauda. He rumbles past my commentary box, and this is going to be vital. Oh, we've almost got a collision down there in the pit lane between Volanda and Peter Cox, who come in at exactly the same time. Mermanoff handing over to Lauda. Looks slick so far. Look at the steam coming off the brakes. Oh, something's gone wrong there. That has not gone well. Usually the driver changeover is done ages before the tyre change is finished. So out he comes. The battle between the Ferrari and the Lamborghini is easily going to be won by AF Corsa because I reckon there's a problem with Peter Cox's car somewhere along the line because it's still up on the jacks. What a shame that is, because that was an excellent battle. But where is Matthias Lauda going to come out now? There he is. Second place, Ortelli stays out. In, though, comes Mark Basseng to hand over to Marcus Winkelhock. 2 minute 4.9 on that last lap. That, whatever changes they made to the Mercedes to try and make the race pace better haven't worked out. In comes Frank Stippler to hand over to Oliver Jarvis. Little screech of tyres as Basseng pulls in. And there's Stippler getting out, Oliver Jarvis getting in. Now this is the interesting thing, despite that slow pit stop, Mayor Manoff and Lauda have still come out in front of Basseng and Bingelhock. And here's our race leader. Into the pits he comes. Will we see Ortelli come into the pits as well? Berman out, Bartels in. They had a 6.8 second advantage coming in to the pit stop. So really, this should be a fairly comfortable stop for the Vita 4 1 racing team. Bartels returns in the net lead of this race, but Stefano Telli, so that's first, second, and third at the moment. In net terms, once the pit stop windows are closed, the Ford GT back in the pits again, going very slowly actually as he comes past the commentary box. Vanthor ready, the team ready. Surely this will let them leapfrog up into second place. Because look, look how much time the gap has come down by. When they came into the pits, that gap between the two BMWs was six seconds. I really don't know which way this one's going to go. Ortelli strapping Van Thor in. The BMW is just coming out of turn 12. Matthias Lauda set the fastest middle sector of anyone in the race so far. 
WRT do seem a little slower, but they're on their final tyre change now. The car is down off the jacks. Away goes Lawrence Van Thor. He's got quite a long way to go down the pit lane. I don't think it's going to be enough for the Audi. He's coming to the end of the pit lane now, and the BMWs are going to move into a 1-2 position. Michael Bartels leads the race. Second place is Matthias Lauda. Third is going to be Marcus Winkelhock. So WRT have lost out in all that. Let's hear from Lauda's teammate, Nicky Mayer Melnoff. He's down in the pit lane with Jenny Gao. I just wanted to ask, you had a slightly slower pit stop than you wanted. What was the problem? Um, it's always so much hectic and we practice so much, but um, we had a little bit of a confusion um, and if not everything is 100% right. Um, yeah, but we'll see. Also, car number 18 had a little trouble, um, but the guys are so quick, the team is so fantastic. It's easy for us to keep up with them changing tires and with us getting into the car. It's, uh, it's quite, quite a tough challenge, but the guys are doing an incredible job every day in and out. Engine change over the night and now already fit here and giving everything, so big thumbs up for the team. Vampire pushing so hard, you see how close he was to the gravel trap there on the exit of two. He is on it, the gap has come down another seven tenths of a second between second and third. The quickest man of them all though was Van Thor on that last lap. Van Thor took 1.1 seconds out of second place. There's second place, the BMW, and that Audi was 1.1 seconds quicker. So Laurence Van Thor is absolutely flying and Jenny Gow's managed to find his teammate, Stefano Telly. Stefan, the chase is on now. Your car seems incredibly quick. Can you make it onto the podium? Uh, we will try hard. I think we were more or less on the podium. Uh, we are a bit quicker than the Mercedes on the track. They've been a bit quicker than us in a pit stop. That's fair. You know, that's uh, the excitement of the GT1 of the endurance race. Uh, let's say sprint endurance race. And we did definitely have a good car over the distance, which gave me the chance to pass some cars uh, earlier on. So, uh, yeah. The car is open now, and we are crossing our fingers that he can pass the Mercedes at least. Okay, thank you very much, Stefan. Thank you. Laurence Van Thor, quickest man of them all in the middle sector. Now we've got this battle that developed very quickly between Salaquada and Oliver Jarvis over fifth place. Jarvis trying to squeeze his nose up the inside. Not enough room going into six. Maybe into eight. Yes, into eight. Outbreaks him, job done. Fairly straightforward there from Oliver Jarvis. And he now moves up into fifth position. Look out, you can see how much time he was gaining on those last few laps. As the president of the Slovak Republic, Ivan Gasparovic, watching on with the crowd here in the main grandstand. And uh, watching up there with the boss of the circuit, Stefan Rossini, you saw in there as well at his local track. Hate to rain on the parade, but the pit stop of car number 32 is under investigation. So Lawrence Van Thorpe and Stefano Telly's pit stop in that 32 Audi is now under investigation by race control. Drive through penalty for car 32. Lawrence Van Thorpe in the number 32 Audi has given us fantastic entertainment this weekend. Driving fantastically well. Him and Ortelli have been on it. Slow pit stop yesterday cost them, and some kind of pit stop infringement today means that they have a drive-through penalty. Let's see if we can see. One of the mechanics was close to the white line, but not really too bad. And then now the car is 15 seconds. Right? The, uh, the, uh, my old the, uh, arms and legs look like this. Wheels are going in. This is all looking okay so far. Because they put the wheels on. You're allowed to have, you're only allowed to have two mechanics working on the car at any time. So that man with the lollipop is fine because all the tires are out of the way. Was the mechanic back over the line? Could be pit lane speeding, could be seat belts. There's a chance that that last mechanic wasn't back over the line by the time the car left the pit stop, but when you don't know what you're looking for, it's difficult to tell. And we've got an off here, I think. Not quite sure who, who that is, but someone has gone off at the quick chicane. A black wheel hub suggests it might be... Well, let's see. We're about to find out who... 
Perrin's going to hit it. Oh, and that's going to rip off the underside and the rear end of that McLaren. So that's what happened. Alvaro Perrin is now battling Thomas Jaeger over eighth place. And the safety car's been deployed. Well, there's a little fillet for the final seven minutes for that debris on the circuit. There we go. Go on, chaps. It's a bit more up the hill. Good work from the marshals here at the Slovakia ring. Relatively new facility here. Safety car stopped on the crest of the hill. That's at, uh, presumably on the run down to the final corner. So surely it will pick the cars up and turn its lights off because otherwise it's going to finish under the safety car. Bartel sees it, slows down. Lights are off on the safety car. We're going to get one lap of racing here at the end of the sixth round of the GT1 World Championship. Safety car in this lap. The BMW team looking fairly satisfied. Bartels should be able to hold on to this for one lap. Oliver Jarvis is the man who needs to be right on the heels of that Mercedes. He's not, though. He's not. But Finkelhock has got a good run. Winkelhock has got a very good safety car restart and he's now right up behind as they come down the start finish straight. Matthias Loudon knows it. He goes defensive. Winkelhock moves to the outside on the run down into turn one. If he can't get the job done on the brakes, but he can. Winkelhock moves up into second place. Great restart from him. Has he got enough speed? The dust is kicked up on the outside of the circuit. Has he got enough speed to challenge Bartels in this final half a lap? I'd be massively surprised. But you never know, Winkelhock very much in the zone. Daryl Young all of a sudden is looking racy to try and get past Philippe Salaquada. Van Thor through turn nine. The, Audi, the BMW, sorry, didn't go too wide and he's managed to keep it all together. Look how close Winkelhock is. Trying to get the drive out of the final sequence of corners. Michael Bartels should be able to hold on to this car. 17 and 38 are under investigation. That's Louder and Bigelock. I think that's for their contact earlier on in the race when Mayor Melnoff went past Basseng. Lights flashing from Winkelhock as he comes into the final corner, but it's not going to be enough. The Vita for One racing team car of Michael Bartels and Yama Berman is going to become the first car to win two championship races so far this season in FIA GT1. Bartels wins, Winkelhock second, Lauda third, Jarvis fourth, Van Thor fifth, sixth for Philippe Salaquada, seventh for Daryl Young. Eighth place is going to be somewhere out there, Thomas Jaeger. There's Yama Berman, delighted with that victory. The top six cars finishing within six seconds, of course, because of the uh, safety car, but still very close at the end of the race. Here's a look at the results. BMW first and third. Yama Berman and Michael Bartels winning by just four tenths of a second in the end over the Mercedes behind them. Mark Basseng and Marcus Winkelhock. First and second in the championship. Finishing first and second in the championship race. Mayor Manoff and Lauda on the podium again. Stippler and Jarvis might be a little frustrated or disappointed that they weren't more on it at that safety car restart. Or Telly and Van Thor. Again, disappointment for them, but... The good news for the Audis is that a fourth and fifth place finish is their best, really, since Nagaro at the opening round. Yama Berman satisfied with Bartel's job. It looked as though Bartel's might struggle a little bit towards the end of that stint, but he managed to piece it all together, fend off the battle for his teammate, and now he's going to take his helmet off and talk to Jenny Gao because she's down there in the pits. Let's start with Yama Berman. Yes, the helmet comes off so that they can get this done. Yelma, congratulations on the win. Congratulations as Michael just goes off. Thank you. That was amazing. Yeah, it was. I mean, amazing weekend. It was. This was the best weekend we've had uh, so far until we came here. I mean, the other time we were here. And uh, now it's even better. So it's really amazing. It's a track. You know, the car is almost built for this track, I think. It's, it's really good. And especially the middle sector. Also, the, the weather, you know, the hot weather helps us. But uh, it was really great. I mean, uh, this is uh, the best we could have done here. And um, now we go to Moscow and Nürburgring. It will be different there because it will be cooler and uh, different tracks. 
So it's uh, not going to be uh, any more like this, I am afraid. But I mean, now we enjoy this and then uh, see how it goes. Michael, I'm sensing that you're happy, but there's also a bit of a different hat for the team manager role. You don't seem particularly pleased as well as being happy for the win. Of course, I'm very happy. We have the maximum um, points for this weekend, uh, double win. Of course, it was a shame to see in the mirror that we lost second place. So anyway, we are happy. We did a good job. We had trouble in the pit stops with my mistake, so I have to defend the lead. So, but it was a great, um, great race. Well, congratulations, guys. Well done. Thank you. Here's a look at the championship standings now, then. Michael Bartels and Marcus Wingelhock. Their last lap duel means that Bartels and Berman hold on to the lead now. 16 points clear of Basseng and Wingelhock in second position, but 16 points, not a great amount. Dusseldorf and Makovic is still in third place, but Jaeger and Pastorelli are now right with them. I think those two may be a little too far off to truly challenge with three rounds to go. Alink will keep picking up the points. The gap has closed down a little bit between them and the Vita for One racing team. 185 points for Al Inkle at the top of the championship standings. 166 for Viva One Racing Team now. Belgian Audi Club, strong performance from them, moves them back up into third. Great to see them back at the front of the pack. Michael Bartels and Yelma Berman, their second time on the top step of the podium. After they won the championship race here at the Slovakia ring, of course, back in June. So it's a very good result for them. Bartels wants to spray the champagne. That Slovakia ring, grid girl knows what's coming, legs it out of the way. Fantastic celebrations on the top step of the podium. We'll see you in Moscow in two weeks' time. Thanks for joining us.